In this video, we're going to summarize what we saw about the salts of different um, of different substances and how they affect pH. So we're going to take a look at the salts of strong acids, strong bases, weak acids, weak bases. Let's start off with a salt derived from a strong acid. So let's take a look at um, hydrochloric acid, for example. As you know, hydrochloric acid is a strong acid and that likes to ionize 100% in water. So it's going to go just one way. It's going to be, it's liquid water there. It's going to go all this way to get, make some Cl minus AQ plus some H3O plus AQ. So if you were going to take your hydrolysis of Cl minus and you were trying to predict what products you would get, so you would make your Cl minus go with water, the Cl minus would connect with an H because that's positive, aqueous, plus OH minus since you removed an H from water. But notice that this HCl is a strong acid. It only goes this one direction here. It only goes towards making Cl minus. So Cl minus will not go the other way. It will not go back in an equilibrium to make HCl since HCl ionizes 100% is a strong acid. So this direction actually will not happen. It will rather stay in the direction that we saw above, this way. So that's why <clears throat> that reaction will not occur, and that's why the, um, the salt of a strong acid is neutral, has no effect on pH. Now let's take a look at an example where we have a weak acid. So here we have a weak acid. This is acetic acid, CH3COOHAQ. When you put that with water, it's actually going to exist in an equilibrium. And so we'll get CH3COO minus AQ because it gave away an H from the end there, plus some H3O plus. Now suppose we took this salt here, the acetate salt, and we did a hydrolysis with it. So CH3COO minus AQ plus H2O. We would get that um, the H would combine with the acetate because the H is positive, the acetate is negative. So this here plus some OH minus. And this we see is a weak acid. So this reaction actually would happen. The weak acid could go, we can go this way or this way in an equilibrium. So the salt of a weak acid does affect pH. In fact, in fact it affects pH as a base because it makes OH minus. So the salt of a weak acid acts as a base. So for example, if we had, well, I'll, I'll combine, I'll do an example afterwards once I do bases as well. But we see here that when you have the salt of a weak acid, so if it's made from this weak acid here after we do hydrolysis, that it's going to act as a base, specifically a weak base. Now let's take a look at the same scenario for strong bases and weak bases. We'll look at sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide it wants to dissociate 100%. So if you had sodium hydroxide and you put it with some water, you would get some Na plus and then some OH minus. So AQ, AQ, uh, this is solid, we add it to some water, and it dissociates 100% in that one direction. You could also simplify it and write NaOH solid and make Na plus AQ plus OH minus AQ. Either way, what we know is that this wants to dissociate 100% because it's a strong base. So if I took this Na plus here, 
and I made it react with water, or I tried to see if we react with water in a hydrolysis. You'd get your NaOH, because the OH is negative, plus what's left over is H+. Plus. But you would see this is a strong base. <clears throat> the strong base would not want to reform. The strong base associates 100%, keeps the Na+, plus. it would never want to go back in that direction. So the Na+, plus, being the salt of a strong base, is neutral. No effect on pH. So, for example, if I had, let's say, the salt NaCH3COO, this part here is Na+, no effect on pH. But this part here is CH3COO minus, and that is a salt of a weak acid, as we saw above here. So that does have an effect on pH. So salt of weak acid acts as a base. And so this would make our pH higher than seven. And lastly, we can take a look at a weak base. Here's ammonia, a weak base. If we may put that in water, we would get an equilibrium that makes NH4 plus, plus some OH minus. Now, here's the salt, ammonium, if you were to put that in water, you would get an equilibrium. The H would be given to the H2O, so you'd get NH3 AQ plus H3O plus AQ. This is a weak base based on our um, KBA, KA table. So this is the salt of a weak base. And the salt of weak base actually acts as an acid because it makes H3O plus there. So if you see the salt of weak base, <clears throat> that can have an effect on pH, it will act as an acid. So for example, if I had NH4Cl, this Cl part is Cl minus. It comes from HCl. That's the salt of a strong acid, so no effect on pH. But here I have NH4. Plus, this comes from a weak base, NH3. So this is the salt of a weak base. Therefore, it's a weak acid. So this salt would predict would have a pH less than 7 since it's the salt of a weak acid or the salt of a weak base, which acts as a weak acid. And the Cl- would not have an effect on it. So we went through this note here pretty quickly because we've already covered examples of this in greater lengths. We did some sample problems to discover these generalizations that we're just summarizing here.